Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started in the interest of time. Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Linda Topoleski and I oversee talent strategy for the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance, which is part of the Allegheny Conference. Some of you know me through that organization. I'm joined today by my colleague, Mike Henderson, who oversees business investment um, at the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance. And we're here today to really give you a deeper dive into the advanced manufacturing ecosystem in this region. Um, we want to show you all that Pittsburgh has to offer in general in terms of quality of life, uh, in terms of advanced manufacturing assets, and in terms of talent, and then walk through any questions that you might have. So we'll go ahead and get started. So Pittsburgh, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, is really an iconic city. Um, it's where many innovations over in, in the course of history have happened, but especially in the manufacturing area. Um, but it's a place that's really filled with um, people and innovations, um, people working together um, to really invent the future here. And we invite you to join us to be part of that and to also build something remarkable here with us. A couple of fast facts about Pittsburgh. When we talk about it, we're actually talking about a 10 county region, which is um, made up of 2.6 million people, a workforce of 1.3 million. Uh, we have a GDP of about 139 billion. We have a growing um, millennial population, which is one of the largest uh, college educated millennial populations in the US. Um, and we have a great uh, cost of living here for those thinking of relocating with a medium home price of just 155,000. So what is going on in Pittsburgh and why should you be a part of it? Well, for one thing, um, we have always been and continue to be a leader um, in innovation. Um, we're a top R&D hub with the universities that we have here and also the corporate R&D that's going on and, and really developing the systems of tomorrow here uh, today. We're a leader in advanced manufacturing and the additive economy. We've always been a leader in manufacturing, but we're leading the future of manufacturing here in terms of advanced and um, additive. We're also an emerging uh, life sciences hub. Um, uh, we have two major hospital systems here that fuel some of the research in addition to um, the University of Pittsburgh. Um, where we have a growing life sciences scene and are attracting uh, more and more star researchers as well as companies. And we're one of the fastest growing US cities um, for uh, tech jobs. So, and that's across multiple sectors. People are taking notice, the media is taking notice uh, on everything from our innovation, but also what it's like to live here. Some of the cool neighborhoods that we have here, companies that are relocating here, and um, just the fun things that there are to do here, if you're even looking at say, if Pittsburgh is a travel destination, but certainly as a destination to live and work. Um, we're ranked um, on many different lists, um, but some of the more important ones to people looking to build a company, expand a company or relocate here. Um, college graduates, certainly, were considered a, a number one destination after college by both Trulia and LinkedIn. Um, best cities for jobs, first time home buyers, um, and everything from, um, I mentioned the, the share of millennials that are here, um, and millennials are really demanding um, certain types of quality of life assets, which we've been building for the last several years, our food scene, um, our nightlife scene, um, hiking and biking trails, which we'll talk about, um, but we're um, a mid-sized city that really has the assets of a major metropolitan area. And where is Pittsburgh for those of you, I know some on the call are um, from outside the US and, and many of you outside of Pennsylvania, if you are um, in the US, um, we actually are located within 45, 45% of the buying power of the US. Um, our airport, um, we have, have an airport that's actually developing a terminal of the future, um, and that will be up and coming in the next several years. Parts of it are, are getting started actually in the next um, couple of months here, though. Um, we service um, many hubs throughout the U.S. Um, and internationally. Um, Post-COVID, we'll be resuming service. Uh, the plan is to resume service to London and Frankfurt, um, two of our European destinations. 
So a city on the move and helping our investors uh, to move uh, to their markets as well. Now I'd like to turn it over uh, to my colleague, Mike, to walk through um, and, and do a deeper dive on advanced manufacturing, what the assets are here, who the companies are, um, and what the real estate scene looks like. Mike? Thank you, Linda. Uh, Pittsburgh has a, a number of thriving industries that have uh, been driven by the technology and the research going on in, in the region here, uh, including things like uh, uh, autonomous vehicles, robotics, fintech, uh, energy production and storage, life sciences, and so on. But today we're going to be talking about the manufacturing sector. And we're talking specifically about advanced manufacturing and also going to touch on additive manufacturing. So our story is one of invention, reinvention, and, and now arrival. Uh, Pittsburgh's roots are in manufacturing, and we have a culture of creating the materials that built the world. Uh, you know about our steel industry, for example, from, from years past. Along the way, we reinvented ourselves. We're leveraging the, uh, the, the, the uh, deep and homegrown assets that we do have here in terms of universities and, and companies and research uh, hubs and so on. So today, Pittsburgh has arrived, and we're the place where what's next is happening now. In the manufacturing ecosystem, we're still a manufacturing economy. We have 2,800 firms that employ about 95,000 people, uh, 50 uh, plus global headquarters, including eight Fortune 500 headquarters. And we have businesses in all kinds of sectors, uh, including steel and metals, chemicals, coatings, nuclear components, electrical machinery, turbo machinery, health and safety products, and, and much, much more. So the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance, we are the marketing and business development uh, uh, agency or, or uh, uh, group for the 10 county Pittsburgh region, as, as Linda mentioned. We're well positioned to provide support for all kinds of manufacturing sectors. Um, we provide all kinds of services to help companies to grow here and also to relocate here and, and start up businesses here. I wanna go through just some of the companies that are building it here, companies that have recently uh, announced that they're coming here, that they're projects that are under construction now, uh, or that they recently opened. So, and these are in a variety of sectors. We wanted to show kind of the, the depth and breadth of our manufacturing sector. So Web Tech Corporation, which is originally started as the Westinghouse air brake company for the rail industry. It's now the rail industry's leading supplier of critical components and locomotives, logistics systems, and, and other products. They uh, are based in Pittsburgh. They have the headquarters in, in Pittsburgh. And they just are recently, actually, they're just about to move into, if they haven't already, opening an additive manufacturing center in what's called Neighborhood 91 at the Pittsburgh International Airport, where they're gonna be doing additive manufacturing to produce rail car parts. Uh, Race Pro Products, this is a California-based company. They do manufacture and distribute automotive fluids. They purchased a building in Butler County here to do their just North, Northeast US distribution. They're also gonna be, be eventually starting some production of some of their fluids and starting with uh, windshield washer fluid. Forms and Services, this is another Pittsburgh-based uh, homegrown company. They manufacture high-end architectural products. They expanded recently through purchasing a 210,000 square foot building that they're gonna be using for manufacturing and assembly. And they expect to grow by more than hundred jobs in three years. Crystal Biotech, this is another Pittsburgh-based company. It's a gene therapy company that develops medicines for uh, rare diseases. Uh, they are not only did the research here, but they are building a 100,000 square foot manufacturing center uh, in the, uh, the airport corridor, where they're going to be actually manufacturing the medicines and the drugs that they produce, that, they, that they've uh, designed. So it's the largest biotech investment in the region so far. And then the Shell uh, polyethylene uh, production facility, ethane cracker, it's been under construction for a couple of years with as many as 8,000 construction employees on site any one day. They recently announced just, uh, just this week 
that they'll expect to open next year in 2022. And in addition to producing uh, polyethylene pellets, they're gonna be building an 85,000 square foot innovation center on site where customers and, and shell company, uh, company people can work on new technologies for uh, um, analytics and materials testing. In terms of real estate, when companies come here, they wanna find out, uh, you know, first, where's the best place to locate? What's the kind of real estate do they have? What, what meets their criteria? And I want to give you some, impact, uh, some background on what's going on here in the real estate sector. We have available uh, right now about 11 and a half million square feet of office space, two and a half million square feet of flex space, which can be used as office warehouse kind of combination uh, space. And then nine and a half million square feet of industrial space. Uh, on the industrial side, we have about two dozen available buildings and sites that are served by rail. And we have several sites since we're on, the, we're on three navigable rivers, uh, we have several sites that have river and barge access as well. Uh, and this is, these are helpful. The barge access is helpful for commodities, large commodities. And it's also been used a lot for uh, bringing large construction pieces or pieces for assembly uh, that can't be put on rail and truck and it's barged to the site. So uh, we're, ha we're happy to have several sites that we can use barges. The real industrial market uh, is about 172 million square feet of inventory, uh, just under 6% vacancy rate overall. We're actually uh, have a pretty solid demand for uh, industrial space, especially in the warehouse sector because of things like e-commerce. The asking rental, uh, rental rates uh, for industrial space is 597 uh, square foot. Warehouse is just a little under that. Uh, which is very favorable compared to a lot of other markets around the country where you're going to be paying upwards of seven, eight, nine, even more than that uh, per square foot. And we now have under construction of about eight and a half, 850,000 square feet of uh, new industrial products. Uh, this is state-of-the-art industrial products, products for uh, mostly for a warehouse, but can be easily converted and used for manufacturing. I want to just kind of highlight two of the uh, um, exciting industrial sites in the region. Neighborhood 91, this is a site at the Pittsburgh Airport on their property itself. It's part of an innovation campus. It's the first development in the world that's looking to focus on specifically on the additive and manufacturing, the 3D printing supply chain into one uh, seamless production site. They're targeting 3D production companies, companies in things like powder storage, argon gas, and, and more, product finishing and such. The airport and the uh, neighborhood 91 are, being, are going to be powered by a microgrid, which is under construction right now. And then Wabtech, which I just mentioned before, they're the initial, the, the anchor tenant first for the, uh, the neighborhood 91, the additive manufacturing uh, neighborhood. And the airport is, is uh, saying uh, has uh, additional tenants uh, either signed or shown interest in coming in to supply powders and argon gas and other services which are needed for the additive manufacturing industry. So it's an exciting uh, project and it's right on the airport property, as I mentioned. Another great story is Hazelwood Green. This is a 178-acre development site which was a Jones and Lachlan steel plant at one point, very close to downtown and also close to the universities in, 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 in Oakland, Carnegie Mellon University and the University of Pittsburgh. The entire site is being planned as a commercial business research residential and recreational site. Uh, mill 19, which is pictured here, this is one of the original mill buildings. It's 1200 feet long. It's been stripped down to the, uh, the structure solar rays put on top of the roof. And what's really interesting is inside this building, it, three new buildings have been built or two of them are, uh, one has been built and occupied. The second one is almost done and there'll be a third one as well. And uh, these will be occupied by research companies, um, uh, institutes and so on. Uh, Hazelwood Green right now has, uh, their tenants include CMU, the Carnegie Mellon Manufacturing Futures Initiative, the Advanced Manufacturing for Robotics Institute, 
Catalyst Connection, which is a consulting group for manufacturers. Motional, which is an autonomous vehicle uh, uh, joint venture between Hyundai and another homegrown uh, Pittsburgh company, uh, Arg, um, uh, Aptiv. And also uh, One Valley Innovation Center is coming in here. There's another building on this site, which is a, an old uh, railroad uh, roundhouse. Um, it's being refilled, refurbished, rebuilt as a, an office and research center. And One Valley Innovation is going to be uh, taking that space. One other thing we like to promote for, uh, especially for manufacturing and distribution companies is our safe operating environment. Pittsburgh is in an area that has minimal disruption from natural disasters, from hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and so on. So we are a safe location. You can continue to uh, operate here even while there are uh, weather events. So uh, we, uh, we'd like to have uh, more companies come in and take advantage of uh, what we can provide in terms of our safe operating environment. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, and as we're talking about advanced manufacturing, obviously technology um, is a key part of that. And we're really fortunate in Pittsburgh um, for many years, we have had at our core um, two tier one uh, research universities that have been at the center of so much of the innovation here. And um, so just wanted to walk through a couple of the research centers, um, several of which are joint ventures between Carnegie Mellon University and the University of Pittsburgh, um, but all relating to um, innovations, um, well, primarily in manufacturing, but also in life sciences um, and a couple of other areas. So um, the, the first one, the Supercomputing Center, this is a joint venture between Carnegie Mellon University and Pitt um, just received well, about a year ago uh, a grant from the National Science Foundation to build a revolutionary AI supercomputer called Neocortex. Uh, the National Robotics Engineering Center is here, um, a world-renowned facility, part of CMU's Robotics Institute, and um, they are an environment for developing, prototyping, and testing robots from concept to commercialization. Uh, as Mike mentioned, we also have the Advanced Robotics Manufacturing Institute, which was founded at Carnegie Mellon, but now operates as um, an independent nonprofit. And it's made up of about 275 organizations um, that are in industry, government, academia, um, to really catalyze a robust national manufacturing ecosystem. And one of the things that they're working on, in addition to um, facilitating facilitating early adoption of, of technologies. They're also working on addressing the skills gap. And I'll be talking about that uh, in a little bit on um, what we as a region are doing um, to advance the pipeline for uh, manufacturing uh, workforce. Um, another center is the Immune Transplant Therapy Center, um, a partnership between the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center and the University of Pittsburgh. Um, and they're doing historic work in immunotherapy, organ transplantation, um, and they're also focused on um, cancer, the biology of aging, and chronic diseases. We also have the Human Engineering Research Laboratories um, that are part of the University of Pittsburgh, run by uh, the renowned Dr. Rory Cooper, who is well known in the bioengineering field um, and, and a veteran himself. Um, and they're doing advanced engineering work um, in research, but also medical rehabilitation, adaptive living environments. Um, the McGowan Institute, McGowan Institute for Regenerative Medicine um, has um, been in existence here for a couple of decades, um, and they're working on really the rapid commercial transfer of regenerative, regenerative medicine technologies, tissue engineering, cellul cellular therapies, biohybrid organ devices, um, so really um, advanced work uh, coming out of this area. And so we've talked about Carnegie Mellon and the University of Pittsburgh. In, in addition to the work with the, the pure research work and the work um, directly related to manufacturing, um, Carnegie Mellon is known worldwide and attracts um, both faculty and students from around the world um, for a number of reasons. Um, 
and one, they have the number one um, graduate uh, program in computer science, number two undergraduate program in computer science uh, per US News and World Report. Um, the number one AI graduate program, and actually they were the first um, AI undergraduate uh, degree program, artificial intelligence. Um, they were the first robotics PhD program, and um, they attract a number of um, R&D investments um, and uh, are actively working on several projects um, in the robotics area as well as in the computer science area um, with this R&D in conjunction with the University of Pittsburgh. Next. Um, so University of Pittsburgh, and I should mention for those of you that aren't from the area, um, both of these universities, they, they flank um, the Oakland area, which is the, the heart of our innovation district. And so any walk um, up and down a few blocks of Oakland and you're really surrounded by students and faculty um, pretty much every, everywhere you, you look. Um, and so it's, it's a really um, stimulating environment, um, a lot of um, just conversations and, and projects started because of that proximity. And um, Pitt is also, um, you know, they're one of the top 10 recipients for NIH funding um, with the medical school um, and the, the life sciences work going on there. And they work closely with, obviously, with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center and their innovation outpost, uh, UPMC Enterprises, um, which is spinning out um, various technologies um, and um, entrepreneurial activity. Um, one of the key areas within the University of Pittsburgh, um, the Swanson School of Engineering um, is, um, is a, a strong um, engineering school um, with uh, mechanical materials engineering, manufacturing engineering, and um, they recently um, added and, and were invested in by ANSYS for the, um, the Additive Manufacturing Research Lab. And that lab is really using advanced um, technology, advanced equipment um, focused on the manufacture of metal, polymers, and um, composite materials. Um, in addition, we have other schools um, of engineering nearby, obviously major research universities, Penn State, um, uh, West Virginia University, and we have manufacturing engineering programs in other schools in the area, such as Robert Morris University. We have over 70 um, career and apprenticeship programs that are dedicated to things like machining, but, but the, the techniques and skills are uh, required in additive manufacturing. And so we're really um, across the board um, with our training programs, two-year, four-year programs, have uh, great depth in manufacturing and advanced manufacturing technologies and training. I'm going to go into that now in a little more depth. So our talent overall, we have about 1.3 million people in our workforce in the 10 county area. We have um, a sort of a super regional talent pool of uh, 234,000 students that are from the 10 county area. And then I also mentioned um, from the, the uh, Penn State and West Virginia universities. Um, annually, um, there are about 45,000 um, uh, completions from our, our 10 county region and about 5,500 of those are in technology degrees and certificates. Our advanced manufacturing workforce um, goes pretty deep, it's about 95,000. Um, so a major sector here within the region. In terms of actual training that we're doing, we, we have, a, as I mentioned, um, you know, there are over 70 different programs. Um, our community college system is very strong um, on this front as well. So the community college of Allegheny County where Pittsburgh is located is um, about to open um, spring of 2022, a leading edge uh, workforce development and training center that will have an advanced manufacturing program area. And they have involved small, medium and large manufacturers in the development of that program, both in terms of curriculum, in terms of the types of equipment, um, and then it'll continue through, through the hiring phase as well. The Community College of Beaver County also has a process technology uh, program training um, in the energy and manufacturing area. I wanted to go in a little more detail about two programs in particular um, that do a good deal, well, one that does a good deal of training for the incumbent workforce 
and one that's developing um, standards that are being um, will be put into play, um, not just in Pittsburgh, but uh, across the US. So uh, the first is Catalyst Connection. Now they're one of the manufacturing extension partners, um, uh, US uh, manufacturing extension partners. Um, in addition, so they provide overall technical expertise um, and, and consulting with manufacturers, but they do um, pretty, have a pretty deep career pathway model that supports manufacturers and, and upskilling the incumbent workforce. Um, they have programs to really stimulate the next generation of workers. They have a program for middle schoolers called What's So Great About Manufacturing, where they, they place these eighth graders into the manufacturing environments and have them learn about them, create videos about them, major prize money for them. Um, they also um, ha have developed high school pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs really to develop a direct pipeline of skilled high school students who can then pursue further technical education or go right into a company apprenticeship program following uh, uh, graduation from high school. They're also um, the lead on a Department of Defense Artificial Intelligence and Manufacturing Consortium here that is um, really uh, combining a, a number of technologies um, uh, within combining AI, additive manufacturing, and robotics, um, and really doing this to spur innovation, but also to introduce new technologies to manufacturers here, and then to help train the, the uh, workforce in those technologies. Um, a second pro and we, Mike and I both mentioned this in, in several ways, the um, Advanced Robotics um, for Manufacturing Institute. So ARM is made up of um, you know, a few hundred organizations and in industry, government, and academia. And their, their purpose is to really to catalyze um, a national manufacturing ecosystem and to address the skills gap. And so they're, they're a Manufacturing USA Institute funded by, by the DOD. Um, but they have um, joint research going on with, um, you know, many of the members uh, of the consortium. One of the programs they're launching um, this year, uh, I think early this year, um, in terms of workforce, it's roboticscareer.org. Um, and it will really be the only national resource um, that will highlight um, uh, competencies and skills that have been vetted by industry experts. Um, that are the skills and competencies you need for careers in robotics and manufacturing um, or for manufacturers that are looking to advance um, their own factory floor, what are going to be the skill sets that they're going to need to train for or to recruit for. And so um, this will go online and it will be a resource for both employers, but also for job seekers um, to show them what the career pathways are and the training that they need to get in order to um, either enter, um, you know, the, the beginning of the on-ramp or as a worker that's looking to upskill to further their career. So not all work around here, um, a lot of play and, and living going on. So we wanted to just take a few minutes just to really tell you what a wonderful place the Pittsburgh region is. Um, it's, it's actually, we hear again and again from people that are here for the first time, just how beautiful it is and how much green space there is. Um, fully 91% of Pittsburghers live within a 10 minute walk from a park or a green space. We have hundreds of miles of hiking, biking and walking trails um, and public parks. And it's really a great outdoor environment. Um, you, typically it's a four season outdoor environment with things to do year round, whether it's hiking, biking, boating, swimming, uh, skiing, boarding. Um, but people here really take advantage of the outdoor environment um, and the topography that we have here. We have a great nightlife scene. Um, despite COVID, um, we're, we're actually actively planning for the relaunch um, on so many fronts of not just our central business district downtown, um, but across the region post-COVID, as many places around the country and, and around the world are doing. Um, but we had a, we had a pretty good um, uh, thing in place before COVID. Uh, we have James Beard nominees, um, some of our chefs um, from around the world who have come here. They might have been originally from here or they, they located here because it's a great place to start a restaurant too, because it's an affordable place with a great support ecosystem um, to, to help chefs that would like to create their own signature places. 
Um, and so we have a growing brewery scene. We, we have um, uh, Brew Fest, which is the first black beer fest in the country. Um, but a number of interesting um, culinary uh, achievements going on here and new signature restaurants. And despite COVID, we have a couple of new restaurants that are preparing to open um, in the downtown area um, in the very, very near future. So there's a lot of hope and promise um, for the restaurant scene here. A lot of good food to be had recognized by restaurant critics um, from around the country. Nightlife. Um, a lot of this has gone on anyway. Mike, Mike showed you the photo of Mill 19 at Hazelwood Green. Just a little bit up the river, there's a location of another steel mill called the Cary Furnace. Um, and throughout last summer, as you know, much of the world was shut down, um, there were actually performances and movies with you know, cars pulling up um, to hang out at this old steel mill as a place of um, really uh, you know, culture, which everyone was, was dying for um, as the pandemic was taking shape last year. But well beyond that, um, we have um, you know, a world-class symphony orchestra, Broadway shows coming through, um, and any number of, you know, over a thousand different performances going on in, in um, our cultural district over a year's time. But live music um, in a lot of places across the 10, the 10 county region, um, live theater, um, uh, museums. So there's plenty to do. Um, and there's always something to do any night of the week in any of our 10 counties um, and always nearby, accessible and affordable. Sports, which we're well known for, um, and we, we take pride in that. Uh, we take pride in winning and having winning teams. Um, but beyond our, our big three in, in terms of the, the, the um, NFL, the Steelers, the, the Pirates for baseball and, and the Penguins for hockey, um, we actually have a professional soccer team here, um, several um, D1 um, sports within our colleges here. And um, we have a, uh, the Pittsburgh Sports League, which there are, as you can see on the slide here, about 20,000 people involved in it. And it gives you a chance to, at any level, if you wanna go out and be on a kickball team, play softball, go kayaking, um, there are a number of different uh, ways to get involved um, in any kind of recreational sports here. Um, in terms of the cultural amenities, they are across the 10 county region, as I mentioned. But we do have a concentration of them um, in, in our, our central business district area downtown and, and the, the nearby surrounds. Um, all easy to get to. And, um, and it's our, the accessibility is something that we hear from people that relocate here um, from much larger cities that within a 15 minute drive, easy to park um, or through public transportation, um, our, our arts and culture are, are accessible to a lot of people um, in a way that makes it um, more usable, uh, more affordable, and um, you know, invites uh, more, more people in. So this is all part of our you know, post-pandemic. We plan to be you know, back in action pretty quickly. Um, in fact, there's a, a big planning session tomorrow um, to really get all of this back online and to reimagine it post-COVID in a way that um, is, is accessible to even more people and, and takes into account the interest of more people that are relocating here as well. So with that, um, Mike and I are both available. We thank you for coming and, and we're both available for any questions that you might have. Um, I see a couple of people threw some things in um, to the panelists while we were presenting um, and we're happy to take any additional questions. Um, I've, I see a couple now um, for Mike, I'm guessing. Um, what, will the, what will power the microgrid at the airport? Uh, yeah, the, the microgrid is gonna be powered by natural gas, which are, is actually coming from the airport property itself that they can, uh, that's under the airport property and also solar. And they're gonna combine those two to, to run generators and so on, create electricity. Uh, but they'll still, and that will eventually power the entire airport. Um, and then they're also going to be still connected to the uh, the electric grid in the region in case there's a need for extra electricity or something happens at the airport that uh, with the microgrid. So uh, it's a pretty exciting project. I don't know if there's too many places 
or too many airports around that have any of that kind of uh, um, uh, electrical generation and, and, and uh, microgrid technology going on at the airport. Okay. Mike mentioned sites with access to barge traffic. Are there any industrial sites with access to both rail and barge? Uh, yes, actually off the top of my head, I think there's three at least. Uh, there's one in uh, Washington County, it's the Mon River Industrial Park. There's a site in Aliquippa in, in uh, Beaver County. Uh, there's also uh, a site in uh, Westminster, uh, Westmoreland County. Uh, the Gibsonton terminal. So there are some sites that have both rail and and barge accessible. And as I mentioned, the barge is kind of has been used a lot for like the shell project. We're bringing in large components, and they can bring barge it up. Uh, but it's also been all, all, all barges are also used for commodities and and other and other uses here. Okay. Um, also for Mike, are there incentives for new projects? Uh, there are some incentives depending, and some of them are location uh, dependent, such as opportunity zones, K KOZs, and so on. Uh, most of the incentives are at the state level, and we have great contact with this, working with the state at all, all time, every day. We work with them. Uh, there's programs for tax credits and uh, employee training funds, and so on. So, uh, happy to discuss anything with uh, about incentives with people. Um, we want to make sure that you can take advantage of all that you can take advantage of on the incentive side. Okay. Um, with that, I don't see any other questions. Um, so we thank you all for joining us today. And please follow up. Our contact information is in the chat if you'd like to. And also um, share with your friends and colleagues. Uh, next week at this time, we'll be doing an info session on the tech talent poll here. So um, if you have anyone that may be interested in that, whether they're looking um, to invest in a place that has a strong tech talent pool and pipeline, or they're looking to um, relocate, um, to have them sign on and we can answer a lot of their questions for them and show them what we have to offer. But thank you all for coming. Thank you.